had was uh, regarding the communication that we have with our athletes, specifically the stories that we tell. Uh, a couple of coaching buddies of mine, they always joke at me and say, oh, you know, it's always story time with Coach Nate. And uh, something that I've had over the years with my athletes is they've come back to me and they've said, you know, Nate, uh, yeah, we had a lot of good times training, winning, being successful, whatever, but I definitely remember more than anything was a story that you told us about this or you know, the lesson that you taught us about that. And as a coach, that is more meaningful than I think any swim race or meaningful in a different way. Uh, and that's because you're reaching a connection with the athlete that goes outside the pool. Uh, I think that's one of the more important considerations we need to remember is that at the end of the day, they aren't just swimmers, they're people. And at one point, every swimmer quits swimming. And we want them to be able to look back on their experience with swimming and not just remember the number of times they played ball tag or were staring at a black line, but some of the other lessons that they picked up on the way, um, appreciating what they have. Even though they don't know it, even as a teenager, they may not really grasp the magnitude of what opportunity they have being part of a club team, a private club team here in the United States, um, being able to swim outdoors. I think that highlighting that and reminding them to think about it in 10 years, 15 years down the road when they're adults, they're stressed out or what have you, they can reflect back on you know, that time when they were younger and said to appreciate what they have. Um, I think it's those connections that we make with the athletes that, uh, that stand out. Uh, again, not more than the swims or the performances, but that stand out in the so, one pack Friday. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so. Uh, oh, no. No, no. One pack Friday. So, um, I was watching TV the other night and on the Science Channel, and, and, I, and, I, and I learned something. It was that the. Or does anybody know the, the, the largest release of energy ever? And you got to think like cosmic. What's the largest release? Big Bang. Star Big Bang, right there. You got it. All right. Do you know what the second largest release of energy was recorded? What? All right. You're getting more. The hydrogen bomb? That was never released. What it was? It was the merging of two black holes. And they, so scientists, I think out in Switzerland, I want to say they, they measured it. The amount of energy release was equal to the mass of 17 billion suns. Wait, wait, 17 billion? Uh, could energy yeah. equal so take, take the mass of the sun, <laughs> but, you know, take the mass of the sun, all right? And then like put it on a scale, like take the sun, put it on a scale, and then stack it with like 17 billion more, and that would like equate out to how much energy was released with two black holes. Like, so a lot. So a lot. So a lot. So a lot. So a lot.